Another sloppy performance by the Islanders spoils Patrick Waugh's homecoming. And Adam Pellick takes a cheap shot that should result in a suspension. We've got all that and a lot more on today's Locked On Islanders podcast. Your Locked On Islanders, your daily podcast on the New York Islanders. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And welcome, everybody, to the Friday edition of the Locked On Islanders podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I want to thank everyone who makes Locked On Islanders your first listen every day. Don't forget to subscribe on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts so you can get new episodes as soon as they drop. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers get 150 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place a $5 bet, visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. So much to get to on today's show. But first, if there's something Islanders related on your mind, if you have a question, a comment, maybe a topic you'd like us to discuss on a future episode, send us an email at LockedOnIslanders at gmail.com. And if you leave your first name, where you're from, we're happy to mention you on the show when we talk about whatever's on your mind. You can also follow the show on X at Locked On Isles. You could follow me, Gil Martin, on X at Ice Wars, NYR, VSNYI. We'll keep you up to date on all things Islanders all season long. And I am live tweeting during nearly every Islanders home and road game. So join me for some instant insight and analysis, and it's always great to talk Islanders hockey with you, game time or any time. What a disappointing loss for the New York Islanders, uh, falling to the Canadiens by a final score of 4-3. to three. And to me, the most frustrating part, it's not that this was a terrible performance. It wasn't. Uh, The first period was certainly pretty bad after the first few minutes, Uh, but the Islanders, one thing they keep doing, and it is, I think, a big reason for the frustration of following this team this year. They so often beat themselves. All of the Canadiens' goals in this game were caused by either bad penalties or bad turnovers by the Islanders, or both. And you can't win consistently if you both have to defeat your opponent and yourself. And that's exactly what the New York Islanders have to do far too often this season to be a consistent winner. Now, hopefully... Once he gets a little more comfortable and the players figure out exactly what he wants and his system becomes second nature, Patrick Waugh can reduce these mistakes so that the team isn't beating themselves, that the Islanders only have to face one opponent at any given game, and that's the other team. But right now, they keep beating themselves. And, you know, it's just the same mistakes over and over again. And yeah, it's going to take time. There's one more game before the All-Star break. That'll be the fourth game Wa is coaching. And, you know, again, as I said, uh, every day, or as you'll know, I said this on the podcast, the Islanders, they got to give Wa some time. But after the All-Star break, that's when things should, we should start to see noticeable improvement as far as the teams play in their own zone, cutting down on the turnovers and what have you. That is sort of the next step that we really need to see. And look, touching opening ceremony for Patrick Waugh, the emotion and uh, the video tribute and the, the fan response, that was absolutely great to see. And, uh, you know, again, just a very touching moment but then after the Islanders had I think it was the first five shots on goal in the game the penalties and the giveaways start coming and voila 
the Canadians take a 3 nothing lead. And you just can't do that. You know, Semyon Varlamov gave up four goals on just 26 shots in this game. And I don't really blame him for any of them. Now, okay, could he have bailed out some of these mistakes? Yeah, he could have. But it would have been a Herculean effort to do that. And, it, you know, he, he made the saves he was supposed to make. And none of these goals would be considered soft goals. It was just giveaway after giveaway after giveaway. Uh, you know, Anders Lee taking another penalty. How many times do we have to see that? Uh, the giveaways by Sebastian Ajo, the giveaway by Pierre Engvall that led to the game winner. Uh, just, again, the kind of performance that you just can't have. And, yeah, the the, the comeback was, was good. You're down 3 nothing. You get one goal in the second period. And then you get that five-minute major. And at first, I thought for sure that the Islanders were going to not come through the first two minutes. They really look kind of sloppy. But the last three minutes of that power play were very strong. And Barzal and Palmieri get the goals. Noah Dobson, again, with a three-assist game when your team scores three and Dobber assists on all three. I think that says something. But you can't put yourself in a 3 nothing hole and then expect to come back and win the hockey game. It just isn't going to happen. And, you know, look, again, you look at the numbers. Are there bright spots here? Absolutely. Uh, Islanders outshot the Canadians 46 to 26. You put 46 shots on most teams, you're going to win more than you lose. You outshoot your opponent by 20, you're going to win more than you're going to lose. But at times, the Islanders couldn't finish. The last minute was heartbreaking as scramble after scramble. It, it was like a couple of pad saves, a post, a couple of misses wide. But boy, the last 45 seconds or so, the Islanders had so many chances. And look at this. Shots on goal in this game. Kyle Palmieri, 11. Matthew Barzal, 9. The two of them had 20 shots on goal between them. The Canadians as a team had 26. Uh, you know, that that is just uh, amazing to see Matthew Barzal get nine shots on goal in a game and Kyle Palmieri, 11. Uh, you know, these are positives. Now, before the game even started, Matt Martin listed now as day-to-day -day with an illness whether or not he'll be available for Saturday's game against the Florida Panthers. That remains to be seen, and we'll certainly keep you updated on that. Don't forget that game Saturday, 7.30 Eastern time, and you can catch every minute of the Islanders' hometown radio broadcast on Sirius XM. Go to the SXM app and do a search for Islanders. But you can't keep beating yourself. And that's what this team is doing over and over again. That's why they made the coaching change. And, and let's be honest here, okay? The coaching change is not going to take the New York Islanders from a team that's just out of the playoff cutoff to a team that is going to be a Stanley Cup contender. Not overnight. And the bottom line is this team's flaws are built into the way this roster is. And it can't, you can get this team into the playoffs. I think you might even be able, if they pull off an upset, to win a round, although they would not be favored against any of the teams they would most likely face in the postseason. But the ultimate responsibility for the way this team is right now, rests on Lou Lamorello and the way this team is put together. And even more so based on the way this team's contract 
uh, so many contracts are structured with no trade clauses, too much money, too much term. A lot of these guys who you would want to deal away, you can't make trades. So, you know, Patrick Waugh is probably going to help. I definitely still have that feeling. But the fundamental underlying problems with this roster and the way it's constructed still lie with the architect of this team, and that's Lou Lamorello. All right, we have got a lot more to discuss. We're going to have the latest news on Zach Parise. We got to talk about the cheap shot on Adam Pellick, and I hope he's okay. There was also another injury. And uh, while we're at it, our Islanders' birthday of the day, uh, a player who was a part-time player on two of the Islanders' Stanley Cup winning teams, Uh, And then later briefly played for the New Jersey Devils. He was a forward. Let's see if you can guess who that is. We've got all that and a whole lot more coming up on today's Locked On Islanders podcast. Today's episode is brought to you by Indeed. We're driven for the search for better, but when it comes to hiring, the best way to search for a candidate isn't to search at all. Don't search. Match with Indeed. If you need to hire, you need Indeed. Indeed is your matching and hiring platform with over 350 million global monthly visitors, according to Indeed data, and a matching engine that helps you find quality candidates fast. Ditch the busy work. Use Indeed for scheduling, screening, and messaging so you can connect with candidates faster. And you can join more than 3.5 million businesses worldwide that use Indeed to hire great talent fast. And listeners of Locked On Islanders will get a $75 sponsored job credit to get your jobs more visibility at Indeed.com slash Locked On. Just go to Indeed.com slash Locked On right now and support our show by saying you heard about Indeed on this podcast. Indeed.com slash Locked On. Terms and conditions apply. Need to hire? You need Indeed. Today's episode is also brought to you by FanDuel. The NFL regular season is over. The playoffs are ongoing, and there's still time to get in on the action with FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers can get 150 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place a $5 bet. That's 150 bucks in bonus bets, win or lose. And the app is so easy to use. There are so many different ways to bet, like live same-game parlays. You can go to the Explore tab to find new bets or Head over to the Parlay Hub. That's the best way to find the most popular parlays. And there's a lot more. So you can bet on the NFL. You've got college and pro basketball. Or use your knowledge of the Islanders at FanDuel. Check out the odds for Saturday's game against the Panthers. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and make your first bet a layup. FanDuel, official partner of the NFL. So, a couple of injuries in this game. Uh, The first one, Hudson Fashing, he was in on a breakaway. He got uh, hit from behind as he got near the net, lost the puck, uh, and fell awkwardly into the boards. So, got to keep an eye out on Hudson Fashing, and hopefully he is okay. Always liked Hudson Fashing, although he's had his struggles this year. but. You know, Fashing only playing 252 in this game as a result of that injury. But the bigger uh, concern, because it looked really problematic, was the injury to Adam Pellick. And this one was a cheap shot by Brendan Gallagher of the Canadiens. And uh, it ended up being a, a five-minute major and a game misconduct for a match penalty. Essentially, on the replay, that was an elbow to the head. And uh, absolutely cannot have that kind of a situation. Uh, I'm not saying that Gallagher went out there with the intent to, to hit uh, Pellick in the head, but that was a blatant headshot, elbow to the head. Pellick, who has already, as we know, had some concussions in the past and who had just come back, what, this was his ninth game back. And every day, as we talked about Adam Pellick 
trying to come back just yesterday uh, and how he had been struggling. You know, I don't know. I hope he's okay because that certainly didn't look good. And I would have to think that the NHL is going to suspend. Uh, I mean, they, they, they have to suspend Brendan Gallagher for a minimum, in my mind, of three games, possibly as many as five. You know, that is sort of the textbook shot, headshot, that the league is trying to cut down on. And hopefully, you know, I hope there is a fair suspension coming out of that. But I do expect that sometime on Friday, we will hear the news that Brendan Gallagher will be meeting with the NHL's Department of Player Safety. And obviously, as far as Hudson Fashing and Adam Pellick are concerned, we will give you the latest injury updates as soon as we get them. But boy, you know, not good. Now, you still have Mike Riley. He was a healthy scratch with Samuel Bolduc back in. Uh, so there are options, I guess, if, uh, you know, if Pellick is injured, but boy, you don't want to lose Adam Pellick again. And remember, uh, concussions can be cumulative in their effect. So the, the, the fact that you get a second or a third concussion only makes the, the severity of the next one that much worse and the odds of permanent damage that much more likely. So hopefully Adam Pellick will be okay. And look, there's one game between now and the all-star break where you get a week off after that. It would not surprise me one iota if Adam Pellick is even just sat down on Saturday as a precaution. And then you give him the extra, you know, week to recover and hopefully he only misses the one game. Look, maybe he's okay, but it certainly didn't look like it after that hit. Wanted to get to a little bit of news about Zach Parise. We have heard, you know, so, you know, during the getaway day last year, he says, yeah, I don't know whether I'm retiring or not, but it's either the Islanders or nowhere. Then we heard a few weeks ago, maybe three weeks ago, that he was starting to skate intensely, possibly to, uh, you know, prepare for a return. Well, looks like he may be returning, but probably not to the Islanders. Michael Russo of The Athletic, he covers the Minnesota Wild. And remember, uh, you know, that's where Parise is from, Minnesota. But he was on his podcast. He said that Zach Parise potentially will sign with the Colorado Avalanche. Here's the quote from Russo. Zach Parise is close to signing, by the way. It's close to happening. I think it's going to happen in the next couple of days. I think Colorado is the team he's going to, by the way. I think Boston has had interest, but I think the Islanders are out. That's just my gut right now. And while it would be disappointing, for Zach Parise to sign with the Colorado Avalanche. Can you blame him? I mean, the point for Zach Parise, if he does decide to come back, is to win that elusive Stanley Cup. And if you were to ask me, out of the Bruins, the Avalanche, or the Islanders, which one of those teams has the best chance of winning a Stanley Cup this year? The Islanders are third. The Bruins might be ahead of the Avalanche, but, you know, maybe the Avalanche give him a better opportunity to fit into the lineup. Either way, uh, we'll keep you posted, but it looks like Zach Parise uh, will not be rejoining the New York Islanders if those rumors are indeed true. And we will see you know, what the situation is with that. We have got more to get to on today's show. We will preview Saturday's game against the Florida Panthers. That's a 7.30 Eastern time start. You can catch every moment of that game with the Islanders hometown radio broadcast. Just do a search on the SXM app 
for Locked On Islanders. Uh, excuse me, for Islanders. Now, we have a preview of that game, plus our Islanders' birthday of the day. All that and more still to come on today's Locked On Islanders podcast. Today's episode is brought to you by eBay Motors. Passion, drive, and patience. What brings home the winning trophy is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. From superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to turn your car into the MVP and bring home that win. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay Guaranteed Fit only available to U.S. customers. Locked On has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24-7, covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of Locked On, plus our national shows covering every league. Go to Locked On Sports Today on YouTube and subscribe to the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel. One game left before the All-Star break, Islanders Back home to take on the Florida Panthers. The good news, the Islanders have a day off before that game on Friday. And the Panthers will be in Pittsburgh Friday to take on the Penguins before they head to the island. So the Penguins, winners of their last two, beating Arizona and Nashville by a combined margin of 10 to 3. Obviously, Whichever goalie plays against Pittsburgh will most likely see the other one. It's Sergei Bobrovsky, the starter. He is 22 10 and two, and two on the year. A 2 5 3 goals against a 9 0 9 save percentage. Backup Anthony Stolarz actually has better statistics. He has a 2 1 2 goals against and a 9 17 percent uh, save percentage. His record 7 4 and 2. The Panthers. They are a good team, no matter how you slice it. They're in second place in the Atlantic, 29-14-4, and four, heading into that game in Pittsburgh. Tenth in the league in goals scored, fifth in the league in goals against. The power play, 13th in the league. The penalty kill, 10th, and they are just solid. Sam Reinhart has been on fire this year. In 47 games, Reinhart, 35 goals. And 60 points that puts him on a 65 plus goal pace. So, uh, lots of offensive firepower. Carter Verhage, 24 goals and 49 points. Matthew Kachuk, uh, 15 goals and 48 points. And Alexander Barkov right behind him with 47 points. This team does tend to be top heavy as far as their scoring is concerned. Uh, the line combinations, Alexander Barkov centering Evan Rodriguez and Mackie uh, Samuskevich on the top line. Sam Bennett, Carter Verhage, Matthew Kachuk, a very, very talented second line. Anton Lundell, E2 uh, <clears throat> Starinen, and Sam Reinhardt of the third line. And then Kevin Stenland, Jonah Gadjevich, and Ryan Lomberg, the fourth line. On defense, Gustav Forsling and Aaron Ekblad, the top pair. Brandon Montour and Nico Mikola are the second pairing. And then Oliver Ekman, Larson, and Dmitry Kulikov are the third pair. The goaltenders, as I mentioned, Bobrovsky and Stolarz. This team is healthy. Nick Cousins on IR. Other than that, they are healthy. And I'll tell you right now, if the Islanders are going to be turning pucks over like they did uh, against the Canadiens, they will not only lose, but lose badly to the Florida Panthers. So something, they've got to clean things up. And, you know, it's getting to the point, I think, where this is very much in the Islanders' heads. And they have got to stop making these really 
foolish errors because a team like the Florida Panthers will make you pay. And again, you know, you look at the standings right now, there just isn't any margin for error. And, you know, the Islanders have 51 points. That ties them with New Jersey for fourth place, but New Jersey has two games in hand. Washington is just one point behind. They have two games in hand. Pittsburgh has four games in hand. They're three points behind. And meanwhile, you know, Carolina is eight points ahead of the Islanders. Philadelphia, five points ahead. But the Islanders have a game in hand. So th this is going to be interesting. But again, the question I think has to be asked, did Lou Lamorello make this coaching change a little too late? Because, you know, it's understandable that the Islanders are losing while they're adjusting to Patrick Waugh. But I think it also has more to do with the flaws of this team. Look, if they don't make the playoffs this year, I think some changes have to be made to the roster one way or the other. And it may hurt Lou Lamorello to trade away some of his guys and to ask some guys to waive no trade clauses. But, uh, you know, if you don't make the playoffs this year, I think changes have to be made. Time now for our Islanders birthday of the day. And it's been a busy set of birthdays this week, but this one is on time. In fact, it's a day early. Saturday will be the 67th birthday of former Islanders forward Hector Marini, third round pick of the Isles in 1977, had a pair of 30 goal seasons for the Sudbury Wolves in the Ontario Junior League. Played his first game with the Isles in 78-79 and even played a playoff game that year. Uh, did not really become a full-time player for the Islanders, but played parts of two seasons there and then uh, spent part of the time with the Indianapolis Checkers, their Islanders' main farm club at that point. Uh, his best season with the Islanders, 81-82, four goals, 13 points in 30 games, in the 81 playoffs, though, he had three goals and nine points in nine games, which is pretty impressive. Then spent two years with the Devils and then finished his career in the minor leagues. Only played 154 NHL games, 27 goals, 73 points, 246 penalty minutes, played 10 playoff games, nine points, all of those with the Islanders. One of his better games with the Isles. How about January 27th, 1982 at the Igloo in Pittsburgh Islanders with Roland Melanson in goal, Michelle Dion, the goalie for the Penguins. And in this game, our Islanders birthday of the day, Hector Marini ends up with two goals. Uh, the first one coming shorthanded in the second period off a, a, an assist by Billy Carroll. And the second one coming on the power play in the third period, John Tonelli and Wayne Merrick getting the helpers there. Islanders beat the Penguins 6-3. to three. Hector Marini a plus one. He had two shots on goal. They both went in, and the Islanders win the game. Two goals also for Anders Kaller in this one. And the Islanders get a 6-3 win. Lots of rough stuff in the third period. Uh, Bob Nystrom, Pat Boutet uh, in the thick of that. But, uh, hey, that was just hockey back in the 80s. And uh, we want to wish a very happy birthday to Hector Marini. He is our Islanders birthday of the day. I want to thank everyone for making Locked On Islanders your first listen every day, every dayers. We will be back on Monday. We'll have our key takeaways from the game against Florida. Hopefully some positive injury news on uh, Adam Pellick and on Hudson Fashing. And uh, we will have a lot of coverage throughout the All-Star break. So make sure you join us for that. We're not going anywhere, All-Star break or no. Have a great weekend, everybody. Stay safe. And of course, let's go Islanders.